Narrative 1. You can't win a championship as a jump shooting team. This is a narrative that held strong in the NBA for decades. The logic behind this narrative was essentially about comparing finesse and physicality. Typically in the NBA playoffs, the games would slow down and after a long, hard-fought series, the more physical team would usually win. It's also about how perimeter shooting is less consistent. Your team might be on a hot streak from distance, but sooner or later, there's going to come a game when the long ball simply isn't falling. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, you live by the three, you die by the three. This was never more true than in last year's Western Conference playoffs when the Rockets lost to the Golden State Warriors in Game 7 after missing a jaw-dropping 27 straight three-point attempts. The thing is, the Rockets lost to another jump-shooting team. The NBA in recent years has been all about three-point shooting, and just about every elite team has also been among the leaders in three-point attempts. There's one major contributing factor to why this changed the 2015 Golden State Warriors. Before the Warriors had their first modern championship run, many elite transition three-point shooting teams had taken their shots at the NBA title, but the title kept eluding them. One of the good examples of this was the Phoenix Suns of the mid-2000s. They were a fast-break team known for their seven-second offense with their MVP facilitating point guard and numerous shooters. Despite having the best offense, elite talent, and one of the best records in the regular season, they would always come up short in the playoffs, with more physical teams like the San Antonio Spurs coming out on top. When the young and upcoming Golden State Warriors began to hit their stride, this narrative was still prominent in the NBA. This decaying narrative was led by TNT's own Charles Barkley, who claimed the Warriors would not be able to win a championship with this jump shooting team led by Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. As we all know, the Warriors did end up winning the 2015 championship and inspired many teams to replicate their style of play. Thanks to the Warriors, Charles Barkley had to eat his words and this narrative is now dead and dare I say laughable for today's NBA. Narrative 2 Jerry West was known as Mr. Clutch. Jerry West is known today for being the NBA's logo and an elite NBA executive. He was one of the greatest players of all time who was known throughout the years for making his clutch shots and having big game performances. Jerry West is an NBA champion who averaged over 30 points per game for his career in the NBA Finals alone, and he was the league's first ever Finals MVP winner despite the fact that his team lost that series. When you take a look at Jerry West's illustrious career, it's easy to see why the narrative existed that he was a clutch player, and I still believe he was. But now, in today's modern NBA discussions, you almost never hear West referred to as Mr. Clutch, but rather as Mr. 1 and 8. You see, Jerry West made a total of 9 trips to the NBA Finals and was 1 and 8 in those appearances. In years past, that wasn't particularly a statistic that kept people from recognizing Jerry's greatness, but with the way the Michael Jordan and LeBron James GOAT discussion has heated up in recent years, people are bringing up finals records more often. As we know, Jordan is 6-0 in the NBA Finals and LeBron is 3-6. This is a statistic that is generally used as a slight to LeBron and a praise for Jordan. So naturally, it makes Jerry West's 1-8 record look atrocious. NBA columnist Mark Stein put it best when he said, Jerry West, of course, had a 1-8 record in the NBA Finals after years and years of torment inflicted by the loaded Celtics. If LeBron James is indeed soon headed to a 3-6 record in the Finals, there are worse fates than being put in the same sentence with West. Unfortunately, due to these GOAT debates, very few of us remember West as the well-deserved title of Mr. Clutch and is now generally known as Mr. 1 and 8. Narrative 3. The home team will win the meaningful games. An interesting development has been happening to the NBA over the years. The home team is winning far less often than they used to. The advantage and the home court advantage is continuously shrinking. In the 1987-88 season, the home team won 67.9% of the time. That means the average NBA home team was playing on level of a 55-win team. That's an incredible advantage. Throughout the 2000s, the average was around 60%, and now, over the last few seasons, 
the home team's average win percentage is closer to 55%. It used to be much more safe to assume that the home team would win, but it isn't the case anymore, which begs the question, why is this the case? Well, for one, the lifestyle is certainly more luxurious than in years past. Luxurious private planes are now a thing, the hotels are more luxurious, and it's simply becoming easier for athletes to treat themselves well while they're on the road. Athletes value their routine. Eating the same meals, doing the same workouts, and sleeping in the same comfy bed are all things that are extremely important to a professional athlete, but the advancement in technology and growing NBA paychecks has made it easier for the NBA player to take his routine with him. Many NBA players also value a good night on the town, which often involves plenty of alcohol, less sleep, and of course, plenty of sex. But with the risk of being seen at a nightclub before game day and it getting posted to social media, players aren't going out to nightclubs as much as they used to. There's also this thing now called Tinder. Players of the 80s and 90s would have head to nightclubs if they wanted an evening with a beautiful woman, but not anymore. Let's be honest, most women on Tinder will be ready to swipe an NBA player in a heartbeat. An anonymous NBA executive calls this the Tinderization of the NBA. The general NBA player is getting more sleep on the road and consuming less alcohol because he simply doesn't have to leave the hotel to get the things that he wants. So although the home court advantage may still exist, it certainly isn't as much of an advantage compared to what it used to be. Narrative 4 Michael Jordan is too much of a ball hog to win championships. Can you imagine a time where Michael Jordan's biggest criticism was that he didn't win enough? Well, in the mid to late 80s, that was the reality we lived in. Jordan was putting up MVP numbers the instant he entered the NBA, but even with a points per game average in the mid 30s, Jordan was often criticized for not making his teammates better and for being too much of a ball hog. It makes sense when you consider the fact that Jordan's superstar peers, like Magic, Bird, and Isaiah Thomas, were all players who liked to pass as much as they liked to shoot, and those guys were the ones winning all the championships while Jordan was getting bounced in the first round. People actually believed that Jordan's offensive aggressiveness was why he wasn't winning, but up to that point, that was a powerful narrative throughout the NBA's history. Wilt Chamberlain won scoring titles, while a team player like Bill Russell won NBA titles. Magic and Bird led dynasties, while scorers like Jordan get bounced in the first round. It wasn't until Phil Jackson arrived and Pippen developed into an all-star that the Bulls started winning and the narrative was destroyed. Turns out you can have a dynasty that's led by a shoot-first type player. These were just some of the narratives that you no longer hear in today's modern NBA. Let me know in the comment section what are some of the other narratives that no longer exist in today's game. I may do more videos on other narratives that have come and gone. Thanks for watching as always. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I post weekly videos about this game I love and I would love for you to be a part of this NBA community with me. Thanks again and I'll see you all in the next video.